Welcome back to Tan This. More like Tan This Dick. It's an incredibly satisfying puzzle game about geometric transformations. The goal of the game is to transform this square into this spiky ring. So I got four possible transformation states. Uh, the end shape actually kind of reminds me of a donut. Like if I make a really thin cylinder and then supply it like this, extend it, it's pretty donut-like. And this is almost the same shape, except this has eight spikes. So I was wondering if I could take the donut and make it wiggly? Well, it wiggles, but not in the same way. I don't think that's valid. But I wonder if I could like take the cylinder and wiggle that. Like this is pretty wiggly, uh, but it only has two bumps on a side and our goal has eight. So you can do a trick at you where you take the long cylinder, put it here, and now you see there's four bumps on the side. And then you can take a longer one and it's eight bumps on the side. But if I put it on here, it's not gonna create the uh, spiky star donut that I want. So I think I have to actually compress it to have the original width. And now it actually does look pretty similar to the shape we want. Yeah, I'll take that, rotate. I mean, that looks just right. Gives it to me, awesome start. Now I gotta create like a horn. With only a single transformation, huh? Oh, I think I know what this might be. I think I need to get a cone and I don't remember how to get there. Oh, kind of like this. You rotate the square 45 degrees, pretty cone-like. So you take the cone, I think if you face it like this, it should produce a shape. I think it actually is. It's similar-ish. It's not exact, though. Maybe I have to, oh, oh, if I move it up, it's actually starting to match a bit more. Look at that beauty. You see the tip? You see the base? Maybe get it to be just right. I mean, that looks pretty good. I hope it just gives it to me. Oh, is it because the base is, like, layered out a bit? Hold on. It's very close. How about this one? This looks pretty close. There we go. Whoa, what is this shape? Why does it have this pattern on it? It starts as a circle. Wait, so I gotta turn it into a square? The entire game I was supposed to start with the square, so now I'm doing the opposite? Well, that was easy. This does not look easy. How do you get the square hole in the middle of that shape? Kind of cubic. Well, oh, this is a different kind of transformation. Whoa, hold on. Interesting, so it's kind of like the circle, but it's much more squared off at the edges. Just like the circle, you can see how the first column relates to that section of the square circle. Next column relates to that slice. Next column, that slice, so on, so on. I guess I'm just taking slices of a square pie. So do I want to match the size of the hole or the size of the whole thing? I'm just experimenting right now because I really don't know what to expect. Oh, oh, look at this. Okay, good thing I matched the size of the hole. That seems like it's the correct answer. Oh, and I get why, right? Cl the center of this is equal to the bottom of the left checkerboard. And there's nothing at the bottom of the checkerboard, so there's nothing in the center. That creates the shape. Let's rotate it. Let's check it. Whoa, gotta make like a, what is this, a spool? There's a circle and a square circle transformation. Well, I wonder if I match the size of the circle to the circle hole, how would I get it to be big on one of the sides? Or on both of the sides, actually. How would that work? Do I maybe have to take a single slice where it's like extremely tall on both edges, but then almost forms an H? Or rather the top half of an H? Maybe like I have to take half of this rectangular prism? Maybe that's what I'm looking for. So like if I move this to the long one, you can see half of a uh, rectangle thing being formed. If I put it here, now I don't know how I wanna rotate it just yet. Maybe like this. It actually forms the shape. It actually forms it. It's a little small. Hopefully it counts. It counts. A square based pyramid. Well, this seems like the quarter pipe slice and then projected into the square circle thing. I can't pick out a name for it. So I got a semicircle, half pipe, and then I got a quarter pipe right here. So I take the quarter pipe and bring it in. It looks like it works. Yeah, this looks about right. It is just small. Still gives it to me. Oh, 
This is closer to an actual top. Like again, a slice is like a very sharp C. Like I guess it's like two cones attached to each other, but I don't think that actually helps me solve the puzzle. I mean, maybe I can make a cone to start with. Like maybe there's some merit to this. I don't know. Like I can make a really thin cone. Like this kind of matches the top. I don't know where I'd get the other half from though. That doesn't make any sense. Whoa, if I tilt it on its side, I can make like a square horn. Kind of cool. It almost looks like a loading screen when you move it back and forth. That's what my brain is doing right now. It's loading. Here's one other thing I noticed. If I take the slanted square and project it to the circle, it comes a bit of an hourglass. So like if I reverse the halves, I would have something kind of close to the desired shape. I could even double them to really make them about the same size. Look, it fits in so beautifully. Damn, I need to get creative for this one. I have absolutely no idea. Hold on. Maybe this is an extension of the uh, half rectangular prison. What if I go for a quarter? Like here you can almost see the bend. I think this is similar to what I'm looking for actually. If I turn it maybe on its side like this and then up, up, flip it around. Let's play a game. Is this anywhere near correct? Cause I mean, look, right? It's similar. It's just a lot smaller and fatter. So what if I make it a bit taller? And then what if I make it a bit taller again? I don't think I did it that well, but it gives it to me. Okay, it's like, you got the idea, please stop torturing me. Oh, I recognize this shape. I think I either made it before by accident or saw it in the trailer, possibly both, but it's a half donut. Oh, I don't have a long transform. I would normally do this with a long transform. Yeah, because like what I would do is start with the cylinder, try to get it to be shorter, and then just do half a donut. What if I like rotate diagonally? It looks cool, but not what I want. Yeah, the lack of transforms is the constraint here. How strange. Let me examine this big shape a bit more. I mean, it's not a perfect cylinder it wants me to make. Yeah, in fact, the holes are much smaller than the actual height of this thing. I guess it looks like binoculars or something. Maybe it starts with a cone somehow? Like a cone with an open mouth? Actually, yeah, kinda. So, I mean, there's similarities between the two shapes. It's got the two holes, it's got the curve, it's just that obviously there's major differences, hole size, the uh, amount of degrees it curves. I wonder if you can like iterate on this process almost. Maybe there's some way to just make it less obviously a cone. Like what if I flip it upside down? Well, then I just get a differently tilted square. Man, I don't get it. I literally blitzed through like the first seven or eight puzzles, however many there were. And then this one is taking me more time than all those combined. What do I not get? It's like I need a short shape where it's like kind of a cylinder, but in the middle, it's wider and its length is half the length of this checkerboard. Basically like a reverse hourglass here. What happens if I take the hourglass, put it on its side here? I get the saber teeth, the fangs. You know what? For the very first time in this game, I'm gonna take a hint. What do you got for me? It wants me to place a cylinder there. Well, I can do that. Wait a second. Am I supposed to put a donut here? Oh my God. That's what that is. Oh, it's a rotation of a donut. Good God. Let me get it more accurate. I mean, this looks basically identical. It's got to give it to me. Thank you. All right, turning off hints again. Here, at least I got more transformations. It's like a, <laughs> it's a water slide. So it feels like just rotating a cylinder, but also increasing its height. Like if this spring didn't increase in height, it would just be a multi overlapping donut. So I got to match the circumference of this with the circumference of the cylinder that's being rotated, maybe close to this. So if it's like this, it's flat, okay? But then if it's tilted up 45 degrees, you can kind of see it rotating here. You can see it start to helix. But what if first, I expanded it. Let's go twice. But then you rotate, rotate, rotate up, and then rotate again like that. Yeah, that's pretty good. Got to make sure it actually rotates the right way. And you got to make sure it's decent distance from the center, but we're back to him being easy again. Easy there, big fella. You should have given it to me. How dare you? I'll try this one. There we go. This next level looks interesting. It's like a quarter sphere. 
Kind of reminds me of a rowboat. But I think a quarter sphere is actually most useful for this. Now, my issue is I don't know how to get to a sphere. I should know, but I don't. I mean, okay, I know how to get to a sphere. It's just the quarter sphere, sphere is the issue. Because, I mean, this right here is a sphere. It's fairly spherical. It's not perfect, but it's pretty good. Let's say I make a sphere that's maybe closer in size to what I want here. I was thinking, like, I take the cylinder and maybe make it shorter. So it's, like, now a half sphere but not really like if i make it smaller again and then again you see how like it kind of resembles the shape at first but then it has this front section looks which looks weird so i wonder then if instead of like a full ring i need a half ring in its place so what if i bring this on the stretched checkerboard yeah because then i have a half cylinder so I'll take that half cylinder. I mean, it's pretty big now. And I, mean, I can see it making a sphere, but I think it doesn't have any innards this time. So if I go to make it half, yeah, you can see how it's a bit more hollow. Half it again. And I think that's such a really close to the desired shape. I hope it just gives it to me. That would be very generous. Nice. Ooh, it's almost making like a little splish. Oh, I recognize this from my first video's thumbnail. This is a really cool shape, actually. So it's got the bowl on the bottom, and this top section actually has a hole in it. I doubt it. Oh, it does go all the way through. So if it goes, like, all the way to the bottom, you could just pass liquid through the bowl without it actually being contained in the bowl. I wonder, again, if this is a level where I'm just best off taking a cross section of the final shape. Like, you almost gotta imagine a very long curve that goes down the edge and kind of expands in width as it gets longer. Now, what's something that does that? This, if I have this on 45 degrees, it kind of reminds me of that shape. I'll try making it big and see if there's any merit to it. Maybe? Yeah, this is actually the exact shape. Oh, that is so cool. It's a little big, but I bet it'll give it to me. Nice. Oh, I gotta make an actual glass. An actual cup! That can be done with just transformations. That is absurd to me. So the bottom is actually a bit more of an hourglass because it looks like this little thin section does run all the way through. And I can see there's like a hollow hole at the top. Yeah, that goes straight down to the bottom. So it's like an hourglass with a cylinder on top of it. Or like specifically uh, this here on top of it. See the resemblance? But I have no idea how I'd get both parts combined. Now this doesn't feel like something I can just get with a cross section. Actually, how did how do I get the hourglass again? Maybe I could ask that question. I uh, like this. So this on the bottom and then the cylinder on top. Well, I get the cylinder by having a vertical paper. And I get the hourglass by having a tilted paper. Well, I guess I could have the tilted paper and then if the square went just vertically from its highest part, it would take this circle and extend it upwards just like that. Now, how do I make a paper bend like that? It'd have to be a 45 degree crease. Maybe that's where this adjustment here comes in. I mean, if I put a paper on here, I get a couple 90 degree creases. What about like a 45 degree? This is interesting to look at because it's not quite the creasing I want. It kind of gets me curious. Like, I you know, still see a bunch of 90 degree creases. I see a 135 degree crease. How do I get a 40 degree crease? 45 degree crease. You know, as you take the paper and stretch it out, the crease does become a little bit bigger angle. So I guess I was technically saying my angle's wrong. What this is, well, I guess it's between zero and 90 degrees. What this is, is between 90 and 180 degrees. If I had guessed, it's probably like 110 degrees. I guess technically what I'm looking for is a 135 degree crease, which maybe I could just get. It kind of looks like that, actually. That's not far off. Maybe it's close enough. The issue is it kind of bends right down the middle. But you can kind of see here how the shape is a little reminiscent of it. So, like, if it cuts off right at this line, you got the hourglass bottom, the hourglass top, and then, unfortunately, the not straight up cylinder. So the angles are all wrong, but the concept is there. Let me shelve that idea and just think about something different. If I just take this half sheet, I could create a right angle. Because this is clearly just a single right angle. Then I was thinking of stretching it out somehow by rotating it 90 degrees and then seeing what shape comes out here. Now, if I didn't know any better, this is like a 135 degree angle. Maybe kind of shrink it a touch. This has its own cute little merits too, but the crease is in a bad spot. Let's change that. 
Let's go about this far here. This might be the farthest I need to go. Because now we're, again, close to the shape. The bottom just doesn't match. The top isn't perfectly straight up. But maybe it'll just give it to me. Damn. Also, I noticed the hourglasses are definitely different. The desired one's just the straight-up semi-circular cross-section. My hourglass is much more sharp and triangular. If I take the hourglass, look at how it changes the shape coming back. What if I just need a semi-circle on the bottom here, and then a vertical piece? This here is my semi-circle. Now I've got the bottom of the cup. How do I attach a vertical piece to it? I guess the way I would do that is actually have a right angle bend on the long checkerboard. It would go right here. I think this is doable, actually. So I got just got to create a mostly straight piece with a very short bend. Kind of looks like this. Do I need to stretch it out? Um, I don't know if I need to stretch it out. It looks just right. I mean, look at this. I got the semicircle and the vertical piece. Don't tell me this is wrong because I refuse to believe it. <gasps> wow. I mean, this is it. This is 100% it. It's a little wrong because the bend is wrong, but the idea is there. Okay, I mean, come on. This one looks perfect. Just a little bit of tweaking and we get there. Oh, that felt so satisfying. 